Okay, three, two, one, we are live. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the Referral Partner Acquisition Show. Today I'll be talking with Jesse Mitterelli, a loan officer in Florida. Jesse Hi again. has been an amazing client the last three years. And the main, the main focus is today is how he started. He was green as grass, joined the mortgage industry back in 2019 or before that. And then where you yeah. are. Uh, you've been a client of ours since, you know, since then. And today it's 2023. It took you 37 months to go from, like I said, green as grass to running your own branch. And yep. it's an awesome accomplishment. You're like, you, you hustle and, and love that. And so I wanted to have you on the show today and have our viewers kind of hear your journey. Everyone's journey is different. So right. what was your journey like and what did it take and how are we a part of it? And so I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, introduce yourself and you know where who are you where are you at today and we can just start from present and we'll okay pedal after. Uh, so I'm Jesse Mutarelli. Uh I'm a branch manager with American Financial Network uh, licensed in Pennsylvania New Jersey Tennessee Florida and New York um, <clears throat> Yeah, I started my branch back in January. I, I actually, my first day as a loan officer on the job, like I was never like an assistant or anything like that. Um, it was December 6, 2019. Like I'll never forget the day. And, uh, you know, I, I literally knew nothing. Like I, I listened to, um, you know, podcasts and, and there's a, a particular host, Conrad Thompson, that, um, you know, he is a mortgage broker. Like, he doesn't talk about mortgages, but, like, that's what he did. He had a podcast that started. When he started, he used his own, he didn't have any advertisers, so he would pump up his mortgage company. And uh, <clears throat> I just got done with a 20-year run in the restaurant business, um, you know, as a server, bartender, chef, whatever. And then I drove for FedEx for, like, <sighs> two years and then, um, and then I just, I was like, you know what? Like I would buy a mortgage from this guy. Like he just sounded like a, like a, like you would have a beer with him. You know, it's just like a, a big old, like Southern guy with a little bit of a draw, like just friendly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, um, I started Googling like how much the loan officers make. Cause you know, I don't know. I actually found out, <clears throat> excuse me. So back a little bit, you know, I spoke uh, with two people. One ended up being my branch manager, and I asked him, I'm like, are you like a mortgage broker? Like, I didn't even know the difference. Uh, but anyway, got set on the right path, and I'm looking at it, and it's like, what can loan officers make? And it's like, average loan officer makes like 50000 a year. And I was like, well, all right, like, that's not the worst. You know, maybe I can do that. Um, and what year, I, what year is it right now? When are you having that? So that's that's 2019. That's maybe kind of the summer of 2019. So, you know, I, I spoke uh, with the one guy who ended up being my branch manager for three years. And he was like, look, if you pass your test, like, I'll give you a job. You know, I can't promise you much, but, you know, whatever. So I was like, all right. And uh, it took me three tries because, you know, I'm bad at tests. Um, and yeah, I passed and I got in and I'll never forget the first day. Like you sit down and you're just like, all right, like now what do I do? <laughs> I'm bad at this too. Dude, it's, it's uh, telling you, that's so funny though. Now I actually found like a program that works really, really well. Um, I actually recommend it to other loan officers because I went from like a 68 on the test to like a, uh, you know, I passed with like an 88 or something stupid. So um, yeah. But no, nice I uh, drop a, yeah. drop a comment down below and request it uh, if you're open to sharing that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and then, uh, you know, I started being a loan officer and I, I just kind of, you know, we hit COVID right away. You remember that? Um, so like everything was shut down. So, I mean, we were just working off, you know, old closed leads from my branch managers over the last like three years. And they... Um, you know, hey, can we refi them? Like, there was this one specific program that had great refi rates, like stupid great for no reason. I don't know why. 
we lived off those until the state opened back up in July and allowed realtors to show houses again. But once that hit, I mean, that that basically for me was nice. I had like almost like a paid internship um, because, nice. you know, from the, the state shut down. No, you know, you're not getting any purchase business. You're only doing refis. Well, it's it's close enough to a purchase application that it it, it gets you those reps and it gets you like, you know, like Panos will tell you, like you're an Encompass the first time, you know, which we had never used Encompass prior to going to cross country. Like it's a lot and it's scary. And if you don't know how to fix errors and, and find certain things, like, you know, you're out on, you're out on an Island. Like if you're working at seven o'clock at night and your support calls it a day at five, like good luck, man. Like you might be able to figure it out with Google, but like it gave me that time to really kind of, acclimate you know to what i was doing and really kind of hone you know it, that that first six months that that'll tell you what kind of loan officer you're gonna be you're either gonna be the lazy loan officer that throws one paycheck in a file and throws it to processing and it doesn't close and it's everybody else's fault sure. or you're gonna stack your file do your income calc make sure everything's right and and know that when you submit a file that is going to close it's going to close no matter what because you did that work up front so you know to um to me i i kind of you know i'm thankful you know one of my branch managers at the time would always harp on this he would say garbage in garbage out so you know if you're submitting garbage don't expect like underwriters and processors to be like oh no problem so it, it kind of gives you that like I need my loans to close, right? Especially when you're first starting. I mean, all the time anyway, but especially when you're first starting and you have like, you know, you're doing one or two loans a month, like you need that to close. Yeah. So you learn really quickly. Okay. How do I spot red flags? How do I, you know, uh, uh, I came across this income issue before, like, where do I find, you know, um, where do I find guidelines for this? Like have in your favorites bar, your, your 4,000.1 FHA, your, your USDA guide, your Fannie Mae sellers guide. Like you learn to just have all that up there. And that's when you decide I'm going to be good at this or I'm just going to be another lazy loan officer. So when and did I you, just decided to be good. Yeah. Well, when did you have that initial thought? Like when you decided to be good, quote unquote, and like, where um, and when did you when did you meet me? Because we we originally connected first. When was that compared to when you had that thought? We so you and I first met like I want to say a month after I started in the business. I want to say end of January because we had met up for lunch. Um, but the state was shut down. I want to say end of February. So it might have been like end of January, sometime in February. Or virtual lunch. You were at lunch. I was at my desk. <laughs> No, 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 no. You and I, you and I did lunch, lunch. I thought. I swear oh, we met in person. No. That's funny that we're uh, that we're live. No, no, not yet, not yet. Really? Yeah, wow. We were supposed to, but I changed my flights. This was like a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what is that? Like what? what um. Anyway, what do you call we, that? Man Mandela effect, right? Like I thought you were there in real life, and right, you, so you were not. Started, this you is know. in 2019. We had a conversation. Um, just it was the beginning conversation. Just got to know yeah. each other. Much coming from it, and then COVID happened, and then we reconnected. I remember it was around Christmas time, maybe Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Yeah, uh, I want to say Thanksgiving. Why did you decide to work with us at the time? Um, so For I had tried doing I had tried doing Zillow on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't work. Thankfully, I was able to get out of that contract. Uh, nobody can ever get out. They let me out after three months. Um, and then I tried another like lead generation thing called uh, Hometown Heroes. It's not to be confused with the Florida like grant program. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Hometown Heroes. Uh, they they brought up like all this like easy geo fencing. Like I, if anybody ever hears oh, people know. use those words, like run. Um, <laughs> I think I did that too. Yeah, 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 dude. And it's like they're like, oh, like your ads will be on all these apps that people have on their cell phone and blah blah blah. And it's like, you know, I didn't get one lead, not one lead. And they call me after three months, 
And they're like, hey, do you want to renew? And I'm like, no, like I didn't get right, one lead, right. not only one deal, not one lead. And uh, yeah, it's funny. They were like, all right, well, we'll give you half price. I was like, these guys are, I, I wasn't even mad at that point. But no, I went with you, Will, because. Um, I was going to say, sorry. Zillow, was there anything else you did before we met? No, no, it was it was just those. And um, what what stood out to me is that I wasn't buying leads. I was getting opportunities with agents, nobody else. And I just thought at the time, that was so forward thinking, like, go where the, the leads are, right? Like, even even though now everybody knows you need to be pre approved to go like step foot in a house. People will always go to agents first, always, always, always. So to get the opportunity to meet with agents that, and I had tried, you know, in the meantime, doing it myself through Facebook Messenger. I mean, you could spend 12 hours on a Friday doing that and maybe get one response after 10 conversations. Like you're, when you broke down exactly how it works, how it's done through LinkedIn you know, we, we do the come, you know, we basically clone you as a person and, and do the conversing for you. I thought, well, that's, that's what I need because I need, there's only so many hours in a day and your intentions are great. Like I have intentions still now where I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then you get caught up like five hours on a tough pre-approval yep. and you're like, well, shit, there goes the day to have somebody working in the background on your behalf, you know, and, and the fact that like anything that's being said to them, me as an LO, I approve. So it sounds like it's coming from me. I don't sell, you know, I don't do what I do because I look a certain way or I dress a certain way. I do what I do because I'm genuine and I'll always be me. And people expect me to be me. I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. So I want when, the messages go out to these agents, I want them to kind of have like a little bit of a twinge that, you know, my, you know, the reflections in my voice, the way my voice right. characteristics Your are, brand. you know, yeah. right. So like, you know, when they do get on the phone with me or I meet them in person, it's not like, wow, you talked like, you know, you were a Rhodes scholar and now you're sitting here saying dude and man. And, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it just, it was important to me that, opportunity that i could you know for a price get that uh, that kind of assistant quote unquote that i needed for that aspect of my business that's the biggest thing get me the at bat and i'll i'll take it from there but i i don't have time to research and talk you know and right. you know you, you get you get agents that are like no i don't want to do that okay great if i would have done that myself how many hours would that have wasted you think you would be a branch manager today if you had done it that way? Oh, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I, um, so let's, you let's, know, let's it down. so it took you 37 months to go from green grass to uh, running your own branch. You're around uh, a year in and you're working with us. Uh, do I have it correctly? The timeline? What, me and you? The timeline. So from you being, so from you getting your mortgage license to meeting us to eventually getting in front of agents on LinkedIn, what, what, what? Oh yeah. Are, I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say you're, you're right. It, it was like, we had, we had gotten back together around Thanksgiving of 2020. Um, you know, the state had opened up at that point. We did like a virtual lunch cool. again. And, um, wonder everyone here who's listening today or either on the replay or live with us now, you know, the, the steps. So each part of your journey, you're the difficult part and the easy part when it came to, you know, how we helped you and, or how you even helped yourself. So, all right. So, so, okay. I got you. I, sorry. I was misunderstanding the question. So I was on a garbage split um, when I first got hired. Um, it was, I didn't know at the time it was garbage, right? Um, again, to be mm -hmm. fair, they, not many people were hiring people that have never been in the business. Um, so, so if, you you were, if you were, if you were on the team, if you were on the team, you were, you were guaranteed $1,800 a month 
in in non-recoverable draw and self-generated leads were 50 basis points and branch gem were 25. Oh yeah, no. see Fano's face. Dude, yeah. that's garbage. What were so you, what were you doing to overcome that? Because that is garbage. So what I did to overcome that, Will, is get with you. Because I knew the faster I could get off the team and not rely on their agents, that that split was 120 and 100. Well, hell, that's a lot better. So I actually, that's the main reason I went with you is because I needed to start picking up enough agents and have enough business coming in that I didn't have to be on that team. So, so we're, that's, feeding, we're feeding agents to you. What are you doing on these appointments and how are you nurturing the relationship after that? I mean, these, so to me, we're 2021. 20, that, 20, yeah. 2021. Um, so at that point, you know, I had committed it's 2021. We've done our first, you know, we're doing our first, um, realtor acquisition campaign um what it did for me more than anything was um it really got me comfortable talking to people that i had never talked to not that i had an issue anyway i was a bartender a server i could talk to anybody but you getting reps with agents it, it just you learn how to speak to agents like you learn the vernacular you learn from those agents what they don't like in lenders. You learn so much if you just listen in those conversations. You want to you wanna also be able to sell yourself without coming across as arrogant. You know, confidence in yourself. Um, but that's what it did more than anything was it allowed me to look at things from an agent's perspective. Because as many conversations as I had with them and ended up doing a good amount of business with, like, it's almost like a cheat code, like a behind the scenes cheat code, because right. you, you have know, to talk to them. Thank you. Yeah, you, it's not. Do you happen to remember the first time you got a referral from an agent? Like how that went? Uh, I, I don't remember the exact one, but I will tell it's you. <laughs> I will tell you that that our first year that we did a campaign, Will, my number two and number four producing agent were from the campaign. So, I mean, it, it could have been them. It could have been, you know, I, I don't know. And I actually, I, I still, from that first campaign, I still have agents that I work with, you know, that I, I've proven that's, that's, myself become. You can't, you can't. Again, it's all about you can't be cheap. You can't look at things from an hourly or, or, or a, 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 an old school perspective. Like I pay for this service because I cannot put a price tag on an hour of my day. I, I, I'm not in that mindset anymore. Like I'm commission. Every hour is the most important hour. Absolutely. Because I could be working, I could be not working. I could be meeting an agent, I could be not meeting an agent. I could, you know, every hour you have an opportunity to do something. So you can't put, it's not like you go to Amazon and they're like, your hour's worth $20. It's not how it works. You're, the, the, the oh, fact man. that I got agents that are continuing to give me business to the day, to this day, like the return on investment is stupid. Like if you, if Will was a stock, like the the return on investment I've gotten is you know, I mean hell I can't even start to to calculate it because it's still giving me returns and it's an infinite ROI because once you have those relationships built like you do you will receive referrals and right. something happens to your relationship with that how agent. Long, how long did it take to like feel like okay I really ha I really know the psyche of. The, all the agents I'm talking to, like I understand them now. Like how long, when we started working together and we started feeding them opportunities, how long, how many months did it take until you were like, huh, I got this now. Like, I can until on. every, I, I don't know maybe that, that part, like, but I will say everything clicked for me. I want to say a year and a half to two years in. That's when everything really came together. I really understood my job and what it is and, what make me diff what makes me different than other people and you know it that's when it all really came together like 
I just came into this business just being, I didn't want to be like anybody else because why? Like, like if you're Pepsi and I'm Pepsi, why would somebody pick me? You know what I mean? Like if you're Pepsi and I'm Dr. Pepper, like, all right, like let's party. Different. Yeah. You know, just people like genuine, right. you know, and, and in a day and age where you have billionaires walking around in t-shirts and sneakers, like those old school constructs of, of what you should look like, don't really matter in a digital age. Like it's not important. Like we, I go to closings, but like, uh, you know, most of the closing docs and everything are done online. All the disclosures are online. Everything's through email. Like, you know, you're not going into the bank and waiting for people to come in and see you. Like I have a virtual, I'm a virtual branch, dude. I don't even have an office. I can go meet people wherever I want, you know, print stuff out if I need, like, it's it's a different mindset and landscape out there and i think programs like yours you got to be forward thinking to to really understand the value in it because it, it allows you again i can't stress this enough to clone yourself to 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 have that and 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 all, all, like i you know not to be blasphemous but it's almost like omnipotent it's like 24 hours a day, this thing's running in the background. And I mean, that's, it's, it's to me, it's, it's the best thing going. So you know, I, way, you're, spending, you're spending time with us right now and agents are replying to the Friday text messages we're sending out to your agents. I, too, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I actually, moment, at this very moment. Yeah, to yeah to I was going to say, I actually am getting these, I'm getting these notifications. To wrap this up so that uh, Jesse can respond to all of his realtors that are waiting for his, for his answer. Uh, is there anything, so is there anything that you would say to anyone who's listening that who wants, who probably green as grass like you were back when we met, what are some things they can do to be to, at where you are today? Owning your own brand. No one's bothering you. Being able to do it all remotely and the whole. I um. So, me personally, what I did, I didn't have a backup. I didn't have a like. If this doesn't work out, I'll go do this. Like it was this or nothing. So, for a year and a half, two years straight, I put in seventy hours a week. Like when everybody was out there living it up because refis and everything. Like you know, what are you doing for seventy hours a week? I'm, 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 I'm studying guidelines. I'm, I'm working on, um, you know, really mastering my craft, really working on getting my brand out there, my availability. Um, and when I say brand, I don't mean brand in a sense, like going to networking events and stuff like that. I mean, you do, I personally think networking events, like sometimes are not worth it, but whatever. Um, to me, that 70 hours was spent, you know, working weekends, working 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday. I didn't have an assistant then. I so, like, I, I, I had to learn. I had to learn, like, how do you order an appraisal? How do you get that appraisal payment? Like, okay, disclosure's got to go out. Like, uh, you know, this, that. Like, how do I do a profile change in Optimal Blue? Like, it's a constant it's a constant learning and growth. And, and it's to me, like, I love this. I love this job in my opinion. And I could be wrong. A lot of loan officers don't love this. They love maybe the income that's possible, but they want to make their money in this, invest in other stuff and cash out. I work shitty jobs. I'll never do anything other than this. This is the greatest job ever. It's, it's, you know, it's problem solving. It's, awesome. it's the greatest. You have to have a love for it. That's it. If you love this job and you, and, and you do every loan as if it was your parents or yours or somebody you care about, you'll be great at this job. And you'll get to the point where, you know, 99% of my loans are closing. I, I rarely have to worry about anything, you know. Obviously, you'll get the occasional Yahoo that buys a Corvette, you know, the week before close. What are you going to do? But, you know, I, I, I know of loan officers and I love I love everybody to death. But, you know, they'll throw 15 applications at underwriting and hope four of them stick for me. Like, why? Why? Why waste that time? Like this job allows us to have a flexible schedule. 
So if you know your job and you love and embrace what you do, you get to live a life very few people can can think about. Like, and I don't mean monetarily per se. What I mean is like, how many people go to job or go to their job? They have to clock in. If you're not clocked in by nine o'clock, you get written up. I don't care if you worked overtime the night before. Corporate says you got to clock in. Hey, you make sure you ask if you have to go to the bathroom. You got to let somebody know. You know, oh, you eat lunch. You eat lunch when we tell you to eat lunch. That's it. You don't eat then. Like, see ya. It, it to me, this job allows us to do that. But if you're if you're if you don't put in the work and you don't care, you're not going to get to enjoy that kind of life. You know, like after this, I'm going to a lunch. And then the rest of my day is pretty free. I'm going to probably go smoke a cigar. You know, I don't know. I don't. Does they blind you know, the agents? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, but, but I mean, all, you know, obviously I do. Obviously I'm great about that. That's the other thing too with this. Anybody interested in what Will is doing, you have to act like it's important because there are times when you got to respond and there's times when you got to make calls that if, if you don't and you drop the ball, you're you're setting your money on fire. Your program bridges. works. Your yep. bridges. Guys, program bridges. Program works. You got, just use an amazing example. Uh, you said it yourself, well, what we do works. And if you work it, it's going to work for you too. So, Jesse, I appreciate your time with us. Time is our most valuable Thanks. asset. And you know that. I, I mean, you've mentioned it many times today. So I appreciate yep. 10 times, 100 times you being here today. Um, if anyone's interested in working with us, just like Jesse has, Jesse has been working with us for three years. And for three years, I've seen him go from green as grass to running his own branch. And so, just just to one more okay. thing, like like you hear stuff like like you see stuff like videos like this. I just want to say, like, I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not like a spokesperson. Like this isn't whatever. I'm legit a three year client and this works. Like I'll never use anybody else because I know if I need something, I can go directly to will. How many companies can you go to with lead generation and, and meet the, the owner of the company? You can't. So to me, like it's the service, it's what it does. Man, that means, that means like a lot to me. Like, like I'm going to take that. No worries, buddy. I appreciate that. I'm sorry in the background too. <laughs> Nice yeah, you know, you know, it's it's this has been a partnership. You know, it's not yeah. like you are working with us or we are working with this is a partnership. So, guys, if you've spoken with us before and you're on the fence, just just do it. Just just get it over with. Like, sign up. Like, we're it's within six months. You're going to you're going to wish that you know you had done this six months prior. You know, if I could rub a crystal ball and see into the future, you'd be running through brick walls to be where Jesse is today because of what he did back in 2020 when he needed it most. So it's paid off. Jesse, I appreciate you, man, being here. Panos, Thanks, guys. Have guys. a good smoke, my man. Have a good smoke. Take it easy, Panos. Take it easy, Will. All right, guys, bye. See you next week. All right. We are out.